Good evening and welcome to this new and old Malden Neighbourhood Committee, whether here in person or watching on the webcast. My name is Councillor Leslie Heap and I'm chairing this meeting this evening. We have two meetings taking place this evening, a meeting of the main committee and then a planning subcommittee will follow directly after this meeting. Hand sanitizers and wipes are made available. As you can see, the windows are open for ventilation. Perhaps not. <laughs> um, if you feel more comfortable wearing a face mask, please feel free to do so. In the event of an emergency and the, surrounding, and the sounding of an alarm, the emergency evacuation procedure is to leave by the main entrance staircase and congregate at the front of the building. I think that's for the... Yeah, here. Normally we're upstairs. Um, anyone requiring assistance should remain in their seats and an officer will assist you from the building. This meeting is being filmed for live broadcasts on the Council's YouTube channel and an archived version will be available to view the, on the Council's website after the meeting finishes. The broadcast will be suspended during any adjournments in proceedings and if the committee resolves to consider information as exempt business. Please can everyone present in the meeting ensure sorry present in the meeting ensure that their mobile phones are switched off or in silent mode for the duration of the meeting. Right, um, just to introduce um, the councillors that are here tonight, welcome all the councillors and in particular Councillor Yvonne Tracy, newly elected um, following the by-election in Green Lane and St James's Ward. Welcome to you. Um, and I'll just quickly go around um, and introduce the councillors and officers. Um, starting on my right, Councillor Andrew Bolton uh, for Coombe Vale. Hello. Um, Councillor Richard Thorpe for uh, Motspur Park and Old Malden. Uh, Councillor Yvonne Tracy, who I've mentioned, um, Green Lane and St James's. Councillor James Giles, also for Green Lane and St James's. Good evening. Um, and Vice Chair Councillor Lynn Henderson, also for Motsford Park and Old Malden East, and Mark Durrant and Councillor Mark Durrant and Councillor Robert Kin um, in my ward of New Malden Village Ward. Then I have Councillor Mike Massimi and Councillor Elizabeth Park for Old Malden Ward. On my right, I have um, Sam Nichols for Democratic Services. And on my left, um, Megan Meller, who is our neighbourhood manager, and, count, and sorry, officer Sonny Fram, who is from um, Highways. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, do we have any questions from members of the public this evening on items not on the agenda? No? No? Thank you. Um, petitions. Have we received notification of a resident who wishes to submit a petition this evening on behalf of the residents of Kelham Road? Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Tanira? Uh, Tantra. Tantra, sorry. Um, would you like to come forward and present your petition? Is that right? You have two minutes. Um, you have two minutes in which to speak on your petition if you wish to. Sure, um, I'll give you a brief. I've not done it before. That's all right. Um, Have a to, seat. But to represent Nella Rose, yes. um, being a resident myself, um, we got together and we'd like um, collectively to put in a petition um, to make improvements to Nella Road, which we feel have been neglected. I've been a resident of Nella Road for 33 years yes. and I've seen a huge decline. Um, Councillor Massimi and I have been in contact with each other and he kindly replied to my emails. But I wish to take it forward because we haven't been in touch since July. And I, I have the petition here in paper format. Shall I give it to you? Ah, oh, okay. Okay. No, that's fine. And is there anything else that you wish to know from me? Thank you. Thank you. No, that's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. It will be processed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do, do you wish, Sherry, may, may I reply or? Yes. It's not. May, may I reply to the resident and the? I'm sorry, um, not at this stage. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. 
Um, moving on to apologies for absence. Um, are there any apologies for absence and any substitute members for the committee? Um, yes, Chair. Apologies received from Councillors Sillit and Coogan. Thank you. pecuniary interests or any other registrable or non-registrable interests relevant to items on this agenda. Do members have any declarations of interest? Thank you. Councillor Park. I am member of a lottery club. So I am member of a lottery club. Yeah. Thank you. Asami. I am also a member of the New Malden Rotary Club. Okay. Yeah, I am also a member of the New Malden Rotary Club. Come uh, on, <laughs> That's quite right. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. It's a non pecuniary interest. I'm a member of the Royal British Legion, Malden and Coombe branch. Yes, thank you. Yes, and, and I'm also a member of the Royal British Legion. And, and yes, that's for me as well. I spoke to Mr. Nichols about it before. Until quite recently, I was actually on the committee, but uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm fine to deliberate on this. That's thing. fine. So, just, just to clarify, so um, there is no applicant for, from the application submitted by the British Royal Legion this evening, um, but there is so for the Rotary Club, so it's advisable that you, you stand aside for that particular item and maybe um, sit in the public gallery or in, in, in another room for that, for that item. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Item five, um, minutes of the previous meeting held on the 30th of June, 22. Um, can I have this as a true record following the amendments that we are going to make? I'll read, shall I read the amendments out? Yeah. Okay, so first of all, uh, First Amendment, Councillor Lynn Henderson abstained on the vote for the New Malden Residents Association, NMRA, community grant application for £2,250. Um, item number two, it be recorded that Councillor James Giles nominated himself as chair, but as he did not have a seconder, there was no formal motion on the table or vote was taken. Item three, Councillor James Giles abstained on the vote of the chair of the committee, but voted in favour of the vote of the vice chair. Item four, Councillor James Giles abstained on the vote for the agreement of the minutes held on the 17th of March, 2022. Is that agreed? Is everything okay now? I can sign those later, thank you. Oh, sorry. Can I abstain because obviously I wasn't around to know one way or the other. <laughs> yes, of course. Item six, um, we have consultation on a parking scheme in California Road area in the neighborhood. Um, to summarize, the committee is asked to approve plans to proceed with a consultation relating to a new parking scheme in the California Road area as set, as set out in attached Annex 1 for the highlighted scoping area. Um, Sonny Fram, would you like to introduce the report, please? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Is that one? Sorry. Hello. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, we, we received a petition from residents of California Road <coughs> for a residential parking scheme and in consultation with ward councillor and meet uh, some of the residents. Uh, this is the first stage that we bring a report here asking for the committee to give us the approval for to go out for consultation. And uh, we plan to give residents and businesses in the area about three weeks uh, for the consultation in the new year, uh, because it's no, uh, we thought it good, not, not, not a good idea to consultation during Christmas period. So we, in the new year, we will start a consultation if we get the approval for tonight. Uh, the consultation area as we attached in Annex 1, uh, 
for the whole of um, California Road and surrounding road. But I must make it clear that it includes Kingston Road in there, but that section of Kingston Road will not be on any parking scheme because that is a cycle route. So uh, we will do the consultation of the businesses and the people living above the shops and all that. Uh, because they might want to have some kind of parking permit to park in the surrounding road. Uh, so I'm hoping, Chair, that the committee can give approval for the consultation area. But before I do that, I, I, um, I like to, um, is this an amendment? Or an, I'm not really sure after consultation with the ward councillor. Oh, right, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's about it, so. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sonny. Um, I'd like to propose a recommendation as set out on page A1 of the report. Councillor Henderson, can you second this, please? I second that, Chair. Thank you. Um, do we have any comments or interest of the public to speak on this. Would you like to come forward, sir? Um, I'll turn my mic off in a minute. Just press the button down to speak. Oh, is it always on? Okay, all right. And he has two minutes. Three minutes per person. In your time, it will, yeah. Yeah, just introduce yourself and away you go. Brilliant. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Um, my name is uh, Robert Shrimpton. I'm a resident of California Road, and I suppose I'm speaking on behalf of several of the residents from number two to number 26, California Road. Um, um, we've had a consultation with um, Officer Sonny, who came to discuss with us about the parking. When um, Fairfield New Homes Limited um, consulted with the building of um, the redevelopment of the home base site. Um, one of the promises that was made, of course many are always made, um, was about that there was going to be money put aside specifically for a consultation. And that was one of the reasons why many residents didn't um, ob give any objections to the development on the site or any of the conditions that they were looking to have in place or questioning about parking. Um, so obviously since, um, well since before the pandemic, parking everywhere has got a little bit tighter. Um, but significantly since um, Fairfield Homes have been lived in the parking down California Road and the surrounding area, including Willow Road, etc., cetera, um, has become um, difficult for residents to park outside their homes. Many of those in California Road don't have um, off-street parking because they've got parking spaces that were designed for the 50s. So everyone has to park on the street. Um, it's also a case in point that Kingston Road um, shops did have parking that was allocated to them about four years ago, um, specifically for them, and it was turned into a two-hour parking limit. Um, uh, I believe at the time that condition was that, that those residential areas, those residences in Kingston Road had parking in front of um, the shops there. But either way, um, there has been a, a significant reduction in parking um, for everyone in those local areas. And you can, you know, see the impact of that. Have I missed anything out? No? Brilliant. Thank you. Have, is that are you finished? Have you, or is there anything more? You still have some time left. Um, oh right, okay. Um, well, it's not my yeah. best subject. Um, uh, in talking with people, um, we looked at the um, the Beresford Road and the Dunbar Road per, uh, permit parking scheme, um, and we could see the benefit of that in particular because it didn't have um, bayed parking. Um, as a previous resident of Surbiton, I. I remember a road that I was part of a resident in a road where bay parking came into force. Um, I have to say, we, none of us have um, Mercedes C classes, so we don't need large parking um, for us. Many of us uh, drive much smaller cars. Um, uh, 
and so in terms of the amount of parking availability, um, there would be a desire for a, a, a parking permit scheme similar to um, Beresford and Dunbar. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Would you like to return to your seat, please? Thank you. Councillor Giles. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like to propose an amendment to the recommendations, namely to add two recommendations for approval this evening. And I don't know if, Sam, you could hand round the amended map of the consultation area. Obviously, myself and Councillor Tracy are the two ward members for this ward. And one of my concerns in the initial map uh, that was proposed is that it includes the entire Wellington uh, industrial estate, which includes circa 65 flats at Crown House, and also 300 rooms in the student flats at uh, Arbury Court next door at the former site of the Duke of Wellington pub. Now, some people in this room might remember uh, going back as far as September 2006, when this committee voted to introduce a 40% response threshold for any parking consultations that take place in the neighbourhood. The concept being that if 40% of people don't respond, there clearly isn't demand for such a scheme within the area proposed. This policy was reiterated in 2015 and in 2017 uh, when the New Malden wide CPZ was consulted on and ultimately that was chosen uh, not to be proceeded with. But my concern is that by including the area to the north of Kingston Road, which would by far, in terms of number of dwellings, outweigh the properties on the south of the Kingston Road, that we may not get the response rate that we are looking for. And also, I'm not convinced that the Wellington Industrial Estate would be in favour of parking permits. So the purpose of the amended map is to split the consultation data into two segments so that this committee, when it comes back for our consideration, can clearly see the differential between people living north of Kingston Road and south of Kingston Road. Everyone would still be consulted, but it would, be, it would give us that more granular data so we could see whether to implement a CPZ or PPA across the entirety, the part of, or none of the area concerned. And so the two amendments uh, I'm seeking, or the two proposals I'm seeking be added for the purposes of the minutes are as follows. Add a third recommendation that reads, the requirement for a 40% response rate established at the Maldens Neighbourhood Committee in September 2006 be waived, because responses from this area are notoriously poor, I'm sorry to say, and add a fourth recommendation which reads, the data from the consultation be split into two, north of the Kingston Road and south of the Kingston Road, as supplied in the amended map. And I would welcome a seconder for that. Perhaps Councillor Tracy would be willing to do so. Yes, I'll second that. The, the amendment is now put for debate, Madam Chair. Does any sorry? Does anybody on the committee have any comments about what Councillor Giles is proposing? First of all, before we go to a vote on that, Members? Councillor Massimi. Thank you, Chair, um, and thank you for the explanation, Councillor Giles. May I ask? That, that's all now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Councillor Giles, for for the explanation and. Uh, the constructive thinking. May I ask, if we were to go with those two additional amendments, could it be the case, if I understood well, that one side of the road might be on one type of parking scheme, while the other may be on a different scheme? Therefore, um, you know, one might be a, a CPZ or resident permit, and the other have a totally different approach. My only concern is that we might overcomplicate, make it harder to enforce and confuse others. Um, 
I do agree with the logic behind some of the proposal, and I think the 40% is something that I'm discovering tonight, and I understand the concern, but I'm worried about having too much complexity depending on the outcome of both sides of the road, if that makes sense. Thank you. Councillor Bolton. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I think it's, it's a very interesting idea. Um, one of the things that I'd be most interested in finding out, and I don't know if this is possible, is perhaps what um, residents like Mr. Shrimpton might make of the idea, uh, given that he uh, would be directly affected by it. But I don't know if he's allowed to come back and speak or if he's, he's au fait with what's uh, been put forward. Um, I think the time for the public speaking has passed now. Councillor Giles, you wanted to speak. Uh, yes, if I may, Madam Chair. Um, to, to respond to Councillor Massimi, uh, no, it wouldn't, is the answer. All, all this would do is give us more granular data about comparing the sides of the Kingston Road in terms of support level. Any decision on whether a CPZ or PPA would be imposed on the area would come to a later committee for determination. And if both sides of the road were in favour and we were so minded, they would still form part of the same PPs, A or CPZ area. However, I too, Madam Chair, would be very interested uh, in the residents' uh, point of view. And so I'd like to move a motion under Procedural Rule 8B of the Constitution that the procedural rules in accordance with Rule Number 16 be suspended to allow Mr Shrimpton the ability to come and address the committee once. Uh, the cohort of population live there, aka students, who are seasonal, as it were, and wouldn't give a, a, a reply to that. And if that would affect people being able to be heard, that, that's a bit of a grave concern, really. Um, as, as to your um, councillor, um, uh, Massimi, um, in terms of a, a divide, um, there clearly is um, a, a residential, it's about the residential streets um, that are south of Kingston Road um, that are affected um, by it. Um, you know, and I assume that when Beresford Road and Dunbar Road, when they were consulted on, that it was it was towards a, a smaller pocketed area that was that was seen to be um, asked about this. So um, I, I do appreciate the the amendments. Um, perhaps I could ask um, Sonny from if he could just briefly explain the consultation, how it would work with the roads. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. The consultation, we will send a letter and a proposal to all the residents within this red zone area. Because as officer, when we are designing a parking scheme, whether PPA or PPZ, we, it's difficult to do a single road or two roads, small road, and then the parking will be overflow onto the next road, and then we will come back again to do the next one. So for the council and for enforcement and for financial saving, we do the whole area. And we, as officer, we love to see everyone in this area would like a, some kind of parking scheme that we can go ahead with it. But like I said, the decision is now to the committee. If the committee agree, look, you should not be consulting certain road, then we more than happy to take it out. But. Um, but this is the area that we we feel that will be good for a, a whole parking scheme rather than one or two roads and then you lead on to problem with overflow into the next you know when you have a problem that's all Thank you. yes mr shrimpton you wanted to say something um can i just ask a, a, a question in terms of barristers road and dumbo road those that have already got parking schemes in place why would why would they be consulted when they when they most actively wouldn't give a response, because why would they? Thank you, Chair. Can I respond yes. to that? Yeah. The reason for that is um, we will give resident option here. Uh, if you see the report, there is uh, normally two type of parking scheme. It's a PPA, it's a permit parking area, and the PPZ is permit parking zone. The zone that we have to mark our individual bay outside somebody house or on the road. Uh, what you have in Bearerford and, and Dunbar Road is a PPA at the moment. When you come in the road, you have you see the sign and say, from this point on, if you have a permit, AA or BB or whatever. 
The reason we include it is, for example, if California Railroad decided to go with a CPZ or something, and then we will have to consult with the bearer first, and we would change it to a CPZ as well. Mm. But we hope that if the rest of the residents around the area go for the PPA, then it's a lot cheaper for the council because it's a simpler, just stick the sign up and say, any, if you cross this point on, it's a residential parking with, a, with permit number A and B and all that. Okay. So that's why we have to include it, Campbell. because if there are changes, then we have to change the whole area. And if we are going for the parking scheme, then the permit number will be the same as Barrowford or, 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 um, or Dunbar, so the people from there can go and park in California, and California, if they haven't got enough space, they can go to Barrowford, because we will be in the zone with the same parking number. That's our idea, anyway. Thank you. Does that clarify it a little bit better? Um, it does. It just seems a bit of a gamble, um, only because we know that the majority of those in California Road um, who, who asked for, for this consultation to happen and have um, repeatedly asked, I think we're up to three times now, um, for a consultation to take place. Um, we were talking about a, a permit parking scheme and our understanding that it would be um, a consultation within those local roads and not include, you know, wider um, because there was no interest or discussion about a ULES um, because, you know, in terms of a parking, it, 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 wasn't, a, it wasn't an option that residents were, were interested in. Councillor Giles. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I think it might be helpful just to clarify a few points here. Um, in terms of the options that residents will be given, uh, the first is a PPA, which is what they have in Beresford and Dunbar, as Sonny said. The second is a CPZ. The third is do nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I would imagine what would happen in Beresford and Dunbar is that most people probably wouldn't respond mm -hmm. because they already have a PPA, which is why one of my recommendations is to remove the threshold for a 40% response rate because, quite frankly, I don't think we'll get it. Mm -hmm. um, and I also mm -hmm. agree with you that, obviously, the parking impact from the home base scheme is felt most... Uh, uh, most pressingly in California Road and the roads immediately nearby, which is why, again, I would like to separate uh, the consultation data into two pockets, one being the Wellington Industrial Estate, which is mainly yellow line anyway, and the second being those roads south of the uh, Kingston Road, which, which are most felt by it. Um, it. It's probably also worth just noting that if a CPZ or PPA did come in, in those private roads at the end, which are England Way, Barker Close and Sherfield Close, that uh, there wouldn't be a parking scheme enforceable there anyway because those roads are not maintained by RBK. Mm. And so I believe, and I would appreciate some clarity from Sonny, which may also help Mr Shrimpton, that although we will write to people in those streets, um, they may well receive a different survey from people who would actually be living within the uh, proposed CPZ or PPA for the simple reason that they wouldn't actually obviously have that, that uh, scheme in their streets. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just answer that? Yeah, yeah then yeah. those two private roads, the council cannot enforce them because it's not, it's not the council adopted highway. But because it's within the zone, we will write to them as well to inform them that there will be a consultation for parking in the area because it might affect them. And I believe they already have their own individual parking by, but uh, by all means, some of them might have more than two or three cars. They would not, so they will get the letter informing them of the consultation going on within the area for parking area, but they will take no part in any parking scheme. Yeah, for those two, two private roads. That's, that's the officer recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Sonny. Um, Councillor Massimi, and then Councillor Bolton. Thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you for clarifying all of this. I have a question, if I may address the residents um, via you, Chair. Um, am I correct also for uh, the highway inspectors to understand that a PPA scheme is slightly broader in the fact that anyone can park anywhere as long as they have the, the right display. And on the other hand, a CPZ is slightly much more regulated where you're less likely, for example, to have 
if they were to have access a lot of the business trade in Wellington Road using the rest or the south of Kingston Road to park overflow of car, or having the private resident at the end of California Road using for second or third car the rest of the street nearby. And my question is therefore, is a CPA, although more expensive to implement, not fairer and easier for residents to ensure a constant car park near or around their properties and therefore something that might resonate either with residents and or um, with a policy to, uh, to maybe have um, the car closer to the properties and less overflow from nearby private street again or businesses like, you know, which might park five or six of their own vehicles um, in the resident area during the day and the operating hours. Does, does my question make sense and to both of you? Councillor, um, Sonny Fan, could you reply to that? Thank you. Uh, the, you've got to be careful here yeah, that CPZ is, um, is, a, is a market in our ways. Uh, so you, you will get less space, let me put it that way, because when you mark out by that you have to take care in, in, into consideration of junction and double yellow line to prevent people parking illegally. So the whole area will be fully marked out. So I, there will be a lot less space for it. A PPA is an area wide with no marking. So you tend to let, get more parking space. Uh, that, that's the only advantage of CP, uh, PPA. Or PP and um, PP and C Z yeah, Z, but in terms of enforcement, that's no problem. In terms of cost, um, wouldn't be a big problem or big uh, big um, because this this money has been funded through Section One Hundred Six through the development of Home Bay. We do have the money uh, within the council, and we like to spend them. And um, yeah, but long-term maintenance might be slightly more expensive with P and CPZ because we have to refresh the line and remark in the line. Um, but but there are no real advantage or disadvantage, depending on what the resident like. Yeah. Thank, you, thank you, officer. Chair, may I ask a supplementary questions to the officer? Yeah. Briefly. So, if I understand well over the cost and the number of cars, um, will the attributions of the parking permit or being a PP or CPZ be the same? My question is, if someone in a private road or in one of the um, Winnington Road up Kingston Street request four or five um, permits, will they be entitled to the same amount based on one scheme or the other? Sorry, is this, you talk about those on the private road. Private road or nearby, yes. Oh, well, nearby and private road, they will not allow to have a permit or park a permit because they, we only allow the people within the, uh, the, the area of consultation or the parking to buy permit. Uh, if you live away from, let's say, um, further road down Southland West, you cannot buy a permit to park in California Road. Uh, because uh, the council only limited uh, amount of permit per, I think, two or three per household. Um, it's, it's not given out to wherever or whoever wanted it to buy a permit. It does answer your question. Or? Right. Thank you. Sorry. Councillor Bolton, can we move on? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair. And, and through you again uh, to Mr Shrimpton, I mean, m my main concern here is that we do the very best for the residents of that area. And although I've been there many, many times, uh, of course, I don't live there. Um, so I'm wondering, from Mr. Shrimpton's point of view, from what you've heard in the last uh, 10 minutes or so, which of these options would you prefer? Do you, do you prefer the second map that was circulated sort of late on or, or the original one? Um, yes, I prefer the second map. Um, and, if I, and if it was my place, I would probably offer a third map um, but uh, yeah most definitely uh, the second one um, but only because of what I was led to believe and what my um, my neighbours were led to believe on how a consultation takes place in terms of whether it's an individual road or several roads um, because you know like I said you know we're not um, if, if you it sounds like what you're saying that you're consulting businesses as well 
for, for business parking? Because that's what it sounds like. Yes, um, we also have to consult the people living on Kingston Road itself, the people living above the businesses and all and But is that consulting the people? The, is that those who are residents or those that are business owners? Resident and business as well. I mean, maybe they work there, they live there. I don't know. You know, we, we, we if they are to prove that they register their car in that address, then we have to give them a, a permit if, if okay. they apply for a permit, depending on where they register uh, their car. I mean, go back to the student flat. If they don't register their car address in the flat, then they would not have no right of buying a permit okay. in the area. Uh, but, so that's but, how but, permit works. But a business, for example, Screwfix, if they had could they get, you know, would they be able to register three or four vehicles for, for business use? Well, I mean, if, I if, if, they, um, if their car register at that address, then they... Oh, OK. Their car has to be registered yeah. at the address. Thank you. All right. Councillor Tracy. <laughs> Uh, yes, I'd like to ask Sadie if I may. I was very surprised when I saw this that Wellington Crescent, because I know the area very well, Wellington Crescent, Lee Close, and even the student flats and Crown House, I was very surprised it was included in it at all because um, Wellington Crescent and all the roads off there, it's um, all industrial. And also the student flats, as you say, I wouldn't have thought were entitled to parking, and Crown House has its own car park out the back. So, so. In effect, I was surprised that this second bit was included at all. Could it not be done without the second bit? Could it not just be done on the first bit for the, for the reasons I've just said? Sonny? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, we include it because we, this is an area-wide consultation for the parking scheme. And if, um, if we don't consult it, and then people might ask, why don't you consult us? We live in the area. And, uh, so it's both ways. I mean, if, 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 um, if you feel that the residents in Wellington Crescent, Lake Cloud, they don't want any parking scheme, take them out, you know, I mean, and then we, um, just, yeah, <coughs> make it. Councillor Giles. Uh, thank you. I, I think the point of the amendment in terms of splitting the data into two is so we can see when it comes back to committee just exactly which parts of this area want permit parking and which areas don't. We've got funding from the developer of the home base site to consult and if residents wish to implement via section 106 funding. And so I think it would be remiss not to consult with the area given we have the money to do so because we don't often have the funds to do so. But the purpose of the amendment is so we can split that data because I don't personally believe people north of Kingston Road would want permit parking and it shouldn't be to the detriment of people south of Kingston Road if the data gets skewed as a result, which is why uh, the, the amendment is to split the data into two, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councillor Thorpe. I, I'm persuaded that it makes sense to split it into two. I think that's a sensible proposal. But I'm uneasy about changing the, um, the thresholds on the grounds that we think people might not be interested in being consulted. I prefer to encourage them to get involved than to change the thresholds before we start. Councillor Giles. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I'm sympathetic to, to the point of view, but my understanding is, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that residents will be written to and given a link only to an online consultation, it won't be the case, as has happened in the past, that residents will be sent a letter with a paper questionnaire and given the opportunity to submit it back to the Guild Hall. Now, we know that online consultations, whilst, of course, more economical and better for the environment, do typically reduce the response rate we get. And as all members sitting around this table will know, turnout in that area for elections is notoriously poor, certainly below the 40% uh, that we perhaps are seeking to, to get here. And what I wouldn't want is for residents who clearly feel very strongly about this not to get a parking permit area simply on the basis that a good number didn't respond. Mm. And so I'm not suggesting that, let's say, the response is something outlandish. Let's say it's 4%. I'm not saying if it's 4%, that we should 
therefore, because 60% of 4% said we should do it, proceed. It's up the committee's gift whether or not to proceed when it comes back. But what I wouldn't want is for this committee, uh, in effect, to have locked itself out of implementing a parking permit scheme. If, say, for example, 25% respond, which is what I would believe would be the response rate in that area, give or take, I wouldn't want us to lock ourselves out of being able to introduce parking purely on the basis that we consulted with a 40% threshold in place. And, that, and that's my fear. But if members are uncomfortable about that, I'm happy for uh, each amendment to be voted on in its own right, Madam Chair. Councillor Bolton. Thanks, Chair. Just um, if we could recap, please, through you. Just um, an apologies if I missed this, but um, the financial implications of splitting it are, well, there aren't any, are there? Yeah, correct. Uh, there are any financial Thanks, difficulties. Sally, you know. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, if there are no more comments or questions, then we will vote on the amendment. Are we take, <laughs> sorry, Madam Chair. Are we taking them separately or together? Um, we'll take them separately. Have you got them written down? Because I haven't got them written down. So the first... First recommendation, recommendation is to split to waiver the 40%. oh to waiver the for, waiver the forty percent um, threshold for actually going ahead with the with the parking area. Yeah. Okay. Was that proposal to go ahead with splitting the, waiving the forty percent for both sides of the road? I lost that slightly. Yes. Okay. So could I have a show of hands for those people, for those members who want to waive? the 40% threshold. Nine in favour, Chair. Thank you. Nine in favour. Those against? One against. And any abstentions? None, Chair. None. Okay. Okay, um, to vote to have the scheme split into the two sections as per the um, map that you were just given now. So we have a north piece and a south piece. So those in favour of splitting it into two sections, please raise your hand. Nine in favour. Those against? One against. And any abstentions? None. Thank you. So that forms the substantive motion. Mm -hmm. Those have been approved. Right, so those amendments um, have been approved, proposed by Councillor Giles. Um, so we move on now to the next, this part here. So um, now you deb um, debate the substantive motion. So we're now going to um, debate the substantive motion on that. Um, can anybody indicate if they want to ask any more questions of Sonny on this, or have we... I know there have been quite a few questions, but... Councillor Massimo? Can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I'd like to ask um, the officer, Sonny, um, or to maybe reiterate, the, between the two choices that we have, you confirm um, that one is substantially cheaper or more cost effective, which I understand is the PPA versus the CPZ. I understand that the allocation also of numbers of permits per business, resident, or registered vehicle at those address impacted will not differ from one scheme to the others. And I understand that the major difference is that one scheme might allow for more vehicles to be parked to each other's because there would be no signage and therefore no maintenance. 
are those three point correct? Correct, uh, Councillor. Thank you. Can I just add that? Um, can I, sorry, can I just add that yeah. you've got to be careful here that um, if we separate out the two areas and one will, no, not say that, but if, if, if the two area wanted, uh, let's say if one won PPA and one won CPZ, and then that would be a difficulty. So uh, you, you, you've got to have um, North and South wanted the same thing, but if they are separately, uh, then there will be a lot of difficulty in, in that. But uh, we hope that if they both won the same parking scheme, that would be a lot easier. I, I was under the impression, having spoken earlier with Councillor Childs and the, the rest of the team, that even if we split, we will go with one scheme irrespectively if we were to choose one of the scheme PPZ or P, uh, CPZ That's or PPA. That's what I understood as well. Yeah. That's what I understood, Councillor Giles. It would only be one scheme. We wouldn't split the scheme. Uh, yes, it would, Madam Chair. I mean, it may be the case. I mean, I think it's incredibly unlikely, but it may be the case that one area does indicate a preference for a CPZ and one area for a PPA. I think it's unlikely, but of course it's a possibility. But it's worth just reiterating that a consultation is not a referendum. It's not binding. And so it will be incumbent on this committee to choose which option we then think is best so that it is then one area that has either a CPZ or a PPA. But that's a decision for us to make uh, in response to the consultation. Thank you, Councillor Giles. Um, does anybody else? Oh, Councillor. Just I have a simple question about the time scale. It's from 8 to 30 whether it's a PPA or a CPZ, is there any reason you have this time scale up to 6.30? Because some of the residential area in Wandsworth, they do finish by 5 o'clock or 5.30, and yeah. Uh, thank you, Councillor. There's no particular reason. We, the reason we, 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 we list this on here, because at the moment, Barryford and Dunbar Road, that's the time we operate for the two roads that we have in the area at the moment. So it would be good to have the same. Uh, so if we decided, or the committee decided that you, you do a different time, then we will have to change Barryford and Dunbar as well uh, within this area. Can I, can I also add one more question, if you don't mind? What means? Uh, also, you say CPZ will be more controlled parking the system, and and also PPA they they can have more space for the the parking the, the they they could create more space for parking. So, so I'm wondering uh, if the what is the implication if we have a CPA? Or, I, I I'm. How can I say I'm not very clear how what it, how much different between PPA and CPZ? If you look at the uh, the committee report, the explanation is in there. But PPA basically you come there are no marking by as all in the, the the road. You have a big sign in front of the junction when you drive in. You say from this point on, it's only resident with a permit. Uh, let's say A, A or B, B on the, can park in this area. Then the parking attendant drive in, every car have an A, A uh, badge on the screen, and they don't get a ticket. Anyone don't have it, then they will get a ticket uh, issue on them. <coughs> CPZ, then you have marking our bay clearly, that you have to park within the bay. If you park outside the bay, if you are, if one of your wheel is on the yellow line or on the pavement, you will get a ticket. You know? So you have to park within a clearly marked bay. So that's why this, the, 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 the capacity, the limited space will be a lot less uh, from our experience. Uh, because when you mark our parking bay, then you have to think about how to restrict people making the difficult turning around the junction, and you might have to give room for people with driveway access, uh, room to uh, get in and out of their driveway, so that they will be reduced. A PPA is a, is a zone, so people will give and take and do park, 
sensible they because they live in an area then uh, you tend to get more space for the, uh, for yeah, the parking. Thank you for explanation, thanks. <coughs> Councillor Kim. Yeah. Thank you for explanation. Thank you, for, yeah, thank you for explanation. Uh, I'd like to know uh, whether you have uh, some data for how many houses uh, on each street and how many pot potential parking permit uh, based on each system, like a PPA or CPG, can be issued. So we can figure out you know, what is the best outcome for the resident living in that area. Yes, all, all, all that will be report back on ah. the next stage when we, after we've done the consultation, uh, we will do, um, that's a few things that we have to do before we come back to the next, um, for the decision. We have to do a local survey. We have to do a bid survey. We have to send somebody to count the number of cars and uh, we will check uh, the number of registered cars for address in the area and we try to work out what we call a capacity versus. So we, we have all that information for the committee to decide. I mean, let's, let's put it this way in a simple term. Let's say that if you have uh, 200 spaces for this area and you get 600 applications per permit, uh, which is really no good because when you pay, because when you apply for permit, you pay roughly, I think, 100 pounds, let's say 100 pounds per year. Resident probably will find that you you pay 100 pounds and you come home, you still can't try a parking space because it's 600 application permit for only 200 space available capacity. Then that's the choice that the resident or the committee have to decide on the next stage after we have all the data. That's, that's the problem. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to move on to the vote, bearing in mind the time, and um, we do have another meeting after this. Um, this is only to decide to proceed with the consultation. It's not a vote on it, okay? So hopefully, if nobody else has any more questions and comments, uh, I'm going to proceed to the vote. So uh, we're asked to approve the plans to proceed with the consultation and taking into consideration the um, other amendments that we've um, taken on board tonight. So, for those members in favour of proceeding with the consultation, please raise your hands. Unanimous. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, moving next to neighbourhood grants. We have a number of community grants this evening. Um, please be aware that some of the material has been circulated this evening, which updates the list of recommendations to take into account the fact that if the first four grant ap applications are successfully awarded, there will be 2,250 of neighbourhood community grant funding remaining. Um, the first is to consider the application for neighbourhood community grant from Voices of Hope as set out in paragraphs 5 to 18 of the report. Um, could the neighbourhood manager please introduce the first application? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to invite Nick Dawson from Voices of Hope to come up to discuss his application for £3,000 for his Bright Box project. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about Bright Box. Um, for those of you who aren't... You can't? Okay. I think it's always on, isn't it? Is that better? Okay, is that better? That sounds better. Um, <clears throat> thank you again, and good evening, everybody. As, as Megan said, my name is Nick Dawson. I'm Operations and Development Manager for Voices of Hope, and I co-lead the Brightbox Project. For those of you who aren't aware of um, the Brightbox Project, Brightbox is a recipe meal kit um, which provides all of the ingredients and a simple-to-follow recipe guide like this in a meal box um, and it enables a family to cook a healthy, balanced meal for five every week. Um, families are... We work very closely with primary schools to select the families who take part in the, 
in the scheme, and they will then be on the programme for a year. So they will receive um, bright boxes for three terms of 12 weeks throughout the year. Um, and obviously the objectives of a, of a bright box is to help them each week with their weekly budget, um, but also in, over the long term to provide them with the, the skills and the confidence to be able to cook from scratch. And we've now operated the programme across Kingston, Richmond uh, and two other London boroughs um, for the last two years since the start of the pandemic. And we've surveyed every year and had some great feedback about the impact that the, the project is having in terms of obviously helping with the budget, um, but also in introducing children's new foods, bringing families together um, around food in the home. Um, and we recently did a survey with Kingston University, which showed even kind of greater benefits of, of a lasting impact of this particular scheme. Um, and we've worked um, across all of the neighbourhoods in Kingston in the past, specifically in, uh, in Maldens. We've worked in Burlington School, Kings Oak, before I think the boundaries changed. I'm not as up to those, but um, yeah. Um, and also Christchurch in the past. And this year we'd be intending to support a further nine families with the aid of this grant. And I'm very willing to answer any questions you may have on the, the programme. Thank you, Nick. Um, do any members um, wish to ask a question of Nick on Voices of Hope? Councillor Durrant. Just, um, just to make a comment for the, I think the great scheme, um, I'm also happy to support it with my uh, councillor uh, grant as well, uh, as I think it provides um, an excellent uh, uh, service for um, for our, the most uh, needy in, in our community. Um, and I, I, I think I particularly like the way that uh, you're connecting up with the, uh, with the schools um, <clears throat> in order to be able to identify those uh, that, uh, uh, that, that can benefit uh, particularly from this uh, the most of all. And I think, it's a, I think it's a very good scheme, so I'll definitely be supporting it. <clears throat> Thank you. Does anybody else have a comment? Councillor Giles. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I love the concept of uh, Brightbox. I do have some concerns about how they are given out. Uh, some members of the committee may be aware that my mother works at King's Oak Primary School. And in the past, inadvertently, she and I have also been recipient of Brightboxes where families that have been identified have either refused to take the box on the basis they don't want what's in it, or in some cases have been given ingredients and the families don't even have a cooker. They only have a microwave, which is obviously a great shame. Um, but, but I'm a bit concerned about the, the criteria for how families are chosen, because we're not talking about an inconsequential sum of money. Uh, and my other sort of concern is the, the amount per box that goes not actually on, on the thing that goes to the, the families in need. I mean, it, it does make up 50% of the cost, which is £1,500 we're proposing to give in packaging, printing, overheads and staff costs. And obviously, I appreciate people need to be paid. I, I get that. But, um, uh, you know, I, I, I would imagine that, that uh, some voluntary effort could surely go in to, to packing these things. I mean, £2.90 a box... Uh, for 37 weeks, you know, per family, um, that works out to uh, £107 in staff costs per family for the boxes. And so I, I just have some concerns, really, over how the families are chosen, uh, given that in the past there have clearly been families that either don't want the bright box or actually can't use the bright box through their own circumstances. And I'm also just a tad concerned with the cost breakdown in terms of the amount of money that doesn't actually seem to be going to, to the people in need. I'm going to bang the poem first. Thank you, um, Councillor Giles. Just before I go on to um, let Nick um, respond to that, um, I'm just going to propose the motion um, for the application for Voices of Hope for Bright Break Box Project for the Summer 3000 be approved. Can I have a seconder for that, please? I'll approve it, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Um, Nick, could you please... Sure. ...to Councillor Giles's question?
questions. So in terms of, the, I mean, thank you very much for the questions, and it's, it's great to get those. Um, and as I say, we've been operating the scheme for two years now and had very few of the issues that you mentioned, but that it, it does happen. We work, so we work with the school, typically the family liaison officer um, or the, the family welfare officer to select the families. The schools know the families far better than we do. So um, we shouldn't, certainly in the, in the cases of the, the, the cooking equipment, that's one of the criteria that, that, that they're made aware of. And obviously we would also then seek to do all we can to help families who are in that particular situation. We've amended, not as a result of that, but more in response to the um, kind of current fuel situation. We've also amended our recipes so that they, a lot of them are microwave friendly now. We've kind of reviewed all of them to do that. Um, it does happen occasionally that a, a bright box won't be picked up by a family. And then obviously that food would spoil if it isn't given away. So we do encourage that it's distributed sensibly within the school. It's, it's out of our control at that point. Um, and as I say, I think in terms of the selection criteria, the schools are very happy and, and much more competent to kind of work within the school in selecting the families, and, and we've had few occasions. In terms of the costs, it's probably worth just putting everything into context because we, we actually, as an organisation, um, just in terms of the maths and the calculations, we, we, we're supplying now nearly 350 of these boxes across the, 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 the boroughs of Richmond and Kingston. So the, the time we coordinate three teams of volunteers, we are in fact a voluntary organisation um, with one or two paid members of staff. So it's predominantly three teams of volunteers, about 50 volunteers each week who um, participate in the portioning and the packing of the boxes and the project management time is the time required to coordinate that effort so there's an element of scale involved in there which means that the, the kind of cost per box is not and per family is not so great um, and the total cost I think as you've seen for per family per year is is 320 pounds um, overall so I don't know whether that answers the questions I'm happy to field anymore as well. Thank you very much, Nick. Does anybody else have any more questions or comments? Councillor Bolton. Thank you very much, Sharon. It was just to, to thank uh, Nick for coming along and, and giving us that explanation, and particularly the, the later explanation as uh, um, relating to the, the, the questions arising. I think it sounds like an absolutely magnificent scheme. I commend you for doing it, and, and thank you for coming to tell us about it. Thank you very much. Any more comments or questions to Nick? No? Um, can we agree this unanimously, or do you wish to have a hand vote? A hand vote, please. Right. Um, for those in favour of the um, application for Bright Box, um, those in favour, please raise your hands. Eight in favour, Chair. That's eight in favour. Uh, those against? None against, and abstain. Two abstentions. Two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You may go back to your seat or leave, leave the room, as they say. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll probably take that option. Um, so you. that was um, agreed, that application. Um, application number two. Uh, is to consider application towards the cost of providing traffic management at this year's Remembrance Sunday events. Um, I'm going to promote the motion first and then. Um, I propose the motion that the application for the sum of £1,000 towards the cost of providing traffic management at this year's Remembrance Sunday events be approved. Would you second that for me? Thank you. Yeah, I second that, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Um, would the neighbourhood manager like to um, ask the applicant to come forward? They're, if they're going to, are they going to speak on this? Or I believe we have a member of the public, Lynn Finity. Do you want to come and speak on this? What? Megan to speak first. Oh, okay, sorry. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Chair. If it's been approved, I'm happy to have questions from. Uh, uh, can I be clear on who the applicant is for this grant, please? It's RBK. Okay, I'll, I'll wait for the report and then I'll ask my questions. Right. Thank you. 
report? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, so, um, the committee being asked to contribute £1,000 of the Neighbourhood Community Grant funding towards the cost of the road closures to ensure the safe running of the Remembrance Sunday event, which took place in November this year. The reasons for this are outlined in the report, and it's necessary to safeguard the public as there are specific skill set needed for traffic management, which RBK officers and RBL volunteers don't have. That's why the traffic management company is necessary. There is no council budget for these events, as the events have relied on volunteers and loaned equipment previously. Given the importance of these events, and to ensure the safety is paramount to the local community, each neighbourhood committees throughout RBK have been asked to contribute 1K of their neighbourhood community grant funding for this year to help the additional costs. The remaining £4,805 will be funded from the, the council's mail budget. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Megan. Um, we have a member of the public who wishes to speak. Linfinity, would you like to come forward and take a seat? Thank you. Two minutes. Yeah. I'm You're probably just, not going I'm, to be... Well, I've oh. just got a question before you start the clock. Oh. I can't find anything in the public participation where it says that I'll be timed, so I did prepare something. Um, and I it's at, the, up, it's I at my discretion. Right. It's just that okay. we're running a little bit late now, and yeah, we have another meeting, and we have to be out by 10.30. Okay, 10 but, my point, but, my point, but my points address safety, and I think it's important that I... I've given the opportunity to say what I, you know, of course. I'm prepared. Is that okay? Stop me if you like, and I can email it to you. But no, I'll, take, I'll go as fast as I can. No, no, just take your time. Just <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you. you. So I'm here to address the committee on behalf of Morden and Coombe and Kingston branch of the Royal British Legion regarding this item. Um, I'm the branch vice chair, and I'm here with the treasurer. Um, we have been heavily involved in supporting the council with arrangements for the Remembrance Sunday Parade and service over the last few years. Um, we feel we should bring the committee's attention to the council's risk assessment for this year's local event and inaccuracies in tonight's report. These need to be highlighted to avoid misunderstanding over responsibilities for this civic event going forward. In September, a letter went to the council leaders from the Lo Local Government Association the National Association of London Local Councils and the Royal British Legion. It states that RBL branches assist in the planning and organisation of the community events, but responsibility for both their funding and delivery rests with civic authorities. It also says, whilst branches can support councils in planning services and parade routes, we remind you that they are unable to assume responsibility for design or delivery of the latter, including the organisations of traffic management notices, the contracting of traffic management services, or the provision of such services by volunteers. However, the report tonight states that traffic management required for these events has in recent years been undertaken by the Met Police, assisted by neighbourhood rangers and the Royal British Legion volunteers using loaned equipment. As this letter to the council states out, our role does not include enforcing the road closures as implied in the report. Our volunteers have never been involved in traffic management in this area to our knowledge. Therefore, we do not rely on loan equipment, nor have we often had to close side roads with little or no signage as the report states. The road closure equipment comes with a traffic, temporary traffic notice which covers timings and parking bay suspensions. It is arranged by the council as part of its responsibilities, as is ensuring road closures are manned appropriately. To ensure space for the parade, participants on arrival, space for the part, parade participants on arrival at the memorial, we, we requested barriers for that area. These barriers are not loaned to volunteers. They are provided by the council as it has responsibility to ensure the safety of attendees. We move them into place within the traffic notice zone after the agreed time for the manned closure of the high street and side roads. As far as we're aware, a traffic management company staffing the event has no more enforcement powers than do the police, and the police do not have enforcement powers, over ensuring suspended parking bays are kept free. Consequently, the risk from moving traffic in the traffic notice zone 
is unchanged. It certainly does not ensure safety and security if a decision is taken to change road closure timing arrangements as happened this year. The company was instructed to leave the high street open to traffic much later than agreed and the safety of volunteers setting up was compromised. It also heightened the overall safety and security risk with the potential for cars to park and move away within the zone in what the police refer to as a sterile area. The council's overarching risk assessment for all four borough events was scant in detail and does not include areas we feel should be covered. Going forward, we ask that the committee ensures there is an individual risk assessment for the Norm Mordren event and arrangements are fully documented to ensure is there is no question or misunderstanding regarding responsibility or liable going forward. The report states there's no budget for these events. This is surprising as historically there are other associated costs to the council, the sound system, the printed service sheets, and the storage of maintenance of the Garden of Remembrance where the public leave wooden tributes. Although thanks to the support of Coombe Boys School, uh, the council doesn't bear the printing costs anymore. It has been suggested that the Royal British Legion applies for a community grant in future to cover traffic management costs. However, this would not be possible as a, this letter that I've referred to clearly states we are unable to assume responsibility for the contracting of traffic management services. The report ends stating that work will start in earnest with partners regarding the future. We were advised in October that a conversation would have to be had in February regarding concerning the funding of next year's event. We are conscious that budgets are being set now and reports usually go to committees in January and February for discussion and final approval. I asked verbally on Remembrance Sunday for a meeting to be arranged before Christmas. This request was followed up in writing by our chairman. We have heard nothing to date. Given the responsibilities of civic authorities, we ask that this committee ensures a meeting takes place urgently to ensure sufficient funding is allocated annually and the future of this important civic event is not jeopardised. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn, for bringing those um, concerns to our attention. Um, Mayan, would you like to reply to Lynn Finnerty, please? Thanks. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I have a few responses, but um, one regarding the risk assessment. Um, the risk assessment that was provided is generic, and that covers the four traffic managements throughout RBK, and it was advised that the British Legion needed to undertake a specific location risk assessment if more information was required. And a meeting is going to be taking place with all four branches of the British Legion and the RBK to talk about the event this year and plans moving forward for next year in due course. Yeah, can I just say that I think the council is losing sight of the fact that the Royal British Legion is not responsible for this event. That's the whole purpose of the letter that goes out to the council, as far as I know, every year. And it seems that the onus is being put back on the Royal British Legion, and that should not happen, must not happen. We are volunteers. We cannot be responsible for traffic management. So the whole purpose is to say, you must take this seriously. You are responsible, and this committee should be aware of this. Um, to say that we have to undertake another risk assessment, I am usually responsible for the risk assessment. I have never seen one from the council before, and this year's one was, in my opinion, inadequate. Thank you, Lynn. Um, those things are outside of the remit for tonight, but exactly. we make points and we will come back on that. Thank you very much. Um, so really tonight it's to um, allocate the thousand pound. Yeah. It's just to say, can we get that meeting quickly and can we really sort out this risk assessment and the council need to know where their responsibilities lie? Yeah, we'll do, thank you. Can, can I just ask Alan a question? Just, just because I don't know. In, in years before... Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. Um, right. I will invite members to have any um, questions on this matter. Uh, yes. Can, Would you like to speak? Thank you. Can I just ask, um, Infinity, if you don't mind, um, 
or you've done it for a lot of years. What, what's happened in the past then? Who's funded the, um, the... Am I right in thinking it was the police that did yeah. the... Um, Yes, so the, the Metropolitan Police have always been very supportive. In fact, they turned up at the meeting to say they had enough staff. It's either staff that are on duty or they have plenty of volunteers. But the council has done, seems to be, I don't know, I've never seen a risk assessment from the council before, but this year they've decided that the police could be called away mm -hmm. um, and there would be nobody to man. Um, and they say that the uh, so that that's sort of uncertain. Although it's yeah. very strange that they also asked us to provide volunteers, and that would also be just as uncertain. Yeah, sorry to press you, but can we move on? Yeah. Really, really pertinent. Well, what it is, Madam Chair, if we don't have time to debate this, I would suggest it's deferred. Um, if well, we, Councillor Giles, we are here to allocate £1,000 for yes, I, the event. Yes, I know, Madam Chair. And we're going to have a vote on it. Yes, we are, but we need time to debate it. My question isn't to Mrs Finnerty. I'd like to draw members' attention to page B17 uh, on our report pack this evening, which makes very clear what the grants will not fund under our Neighbourhood Community Grants Scheme. I'd like to refer you to paragraph 26... Grants cannot be used to pay for, the fifth bullet point, activities that are part of normal day-to-day -day running, and the final bullet point, retrospective events and activities. This is a retrospective event. It has already taken place. The money, I goodness knows where from, but the money's already been spent. The £1,000 has already come out of a budget from somewhere. So I don't feel it's accurate to say there's no other budget for it. The event has taken place, the supplier has been paid, therefore it is not reasonable to say we rely on £1,000 for the grant here this evening. Furthermore, this event has taken place in New Malden for 100 years, 101 years, this is the 101st year since the conception of the Malden and Coombe Royal British Legion. It baffles me that on the, its 101st year, the council is asked to make a community grant, a grant to voluntary and community groups to itself, we're, trying, we're proposing to make a grant to ourselves. It doesn't comply with community grant guidance, therefore we should not be making the award. It's retrospective, and furthermore, as a result of making this grant this evening, if members are so minded, it will mean £750 less for LED lights down our high street to complete the set that are already established on some of our mature trees. To vote this through is a breach of policy it's a breach of guidance, and I would urge it to be withdrawn. The money has been spent already from a different budget. This application should not even be being heard. RBK should not be applying for a grant from itself. This is a lunacy. Thank you, Councillor Giles. Um, I just want to say um, the amounts, the 1,000 from each of the other committees, neighbourhood committees, has been approved or is being approved. If you just let me finish... And um, this was, wouldn't have been a retrospective application, but we cancelled, or the other meeting was cancelled in November, and it would have been the following Sunday. So it's, it's had to be done this way because of the fact that the other meetings were cancelled. Uh, that's, that's, well, that's, that's all very well and good, Madam Chair, but it's incumbent on members of this committee to call a meeting at any point. A quarter of the membership of this committee can summon a meeting of this committee at any point through the municipal year and could have done so at any point before the event. The fact that we are now meeting after the event makes this a retrospective application. I could have applied, when I was a member of the public, for a market grant before the market took place. I didn't. It was after the event, and therefore the council wouldn't consider an application. We have to be consistent with how we're applying our policy when it comes to community grants. If we're not consistent, any Tom, Dick or Harry could apply, and I would expect it to come before this committee for our approval. There's no point having a policy if we're not going to stick to it. If members didn't want to summon a special meeting, that's fine. This is now a retrospective application. The money has already been spent from another budget, and therefore we should not be giving money to this. We should be giving it to the very hard-working town centre partnership, which as a result of RBK's mismanagement of Remembrance Sunday, the town centre partnership are set to be disadvantaged, and I, for one, will not stand for that.
Councillor Thorpe, and then I'm going to go to a vote. Uh, Chair, can I just check? Did Councillor Giles ask for an additional meeting when he was informed of this in November? I don't know the answer to that. I'm happy to answer it, Madam Chair. Go ahead. I'm not able to request an additional meeting, Councillor Thorpe, because my group doesn't comprise 25% of the membership of this committee, which the Lib Dem constitution requires. Had it have been the former threshold before the Liberal Democrats changed the constitution in 2019, I would have done. We don't have 25%. Only the Lib Dems can summon a meeting of this committee. We will go to the vote. Um, those in favour of awarding £1,000 to the Remembrance Sunday events, please raise your hand in favour. Seven in favour. Those against? Two. And any abstentions? One. Thank you. The next application is to consider an application for achieving for children for their art project. Um, I propose the motion that the application for the sum of 3,000 of community grant funding to AFC, achieving for children for their art project um, set be approved. Do you second this, Councillor Henderson? I second that, Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. We have Sarah Hanlon from Achieving for Children here to discuss her project and answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you. you very much for coming to speak. No, thank you. It's my thank pleasure. You. Um, yeah, so um, uh, we um, are a small um, a supported accommodation unit in New Malden. Um, we support care leavers A16 to 25. Um, and during COVID, we did um, a garden project that really brought our young people together um, because they weren't, you know, obviously leaving uh, the house to do any education or employment at that time. Um, when we had an opening for this, um, at the end of this garden project, it actually came to light from old management that this is the 30th year of this, this supported accommodation unit. And a few of our young people who are currently living with us at the moment really wanted to mark that and have um, an art installation in our garden, which um, highlights all the young people that have ever stayed um, in the supported accommodation for the last 30 years, but also um, work with some local artists to uh, do some artwork um, that each young person coming in from now can add to as well as part of their story. Um, so I'm asking, you know, we're asking um, together for the money so we can, we can do that for them. I'm happy to answer any more specific questions. Thank you very much indeed. Um, do any members have any questions or comments? No? Okay. Um, you're happy for me to go to the vote? Those in favour of... I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, Chair. I, I, I know we're um, a little bit pushed for time, but again, I, I think it's magnificent. Thank you for coming to tell us about it. I didn't hear what you said, just can you repeat that? I was uh, thanking the applicant for coming to tell us about it and uh, further saying that I thought the project was magnificent. Thank you, I must get some hearing aids. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much, Councillor Bolton. Right, can I have a vote? Those in favour of uh, the allocation of 3,000 to the, um, the art project for AFC, please raise your hands. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Um, application four um, is to consider the uh, New Malden Rotary hanging baskets on the high street in New Malden. Um, what? Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, I propose the motion, the application, sum of 3,000 for the um, hanging baskets for the rotary in the high street. Um, will you second that for me, Councillor Henderson? I do, Chair. Thank I'll you. And Simon Edwards. Yeah, You'd hello like again. to speak. Good evening. Yeah, a blast from the past. Take it away. Um, yeah, I, well, you all know the hanging baskets. The rotary has uh, arranged them 
uh, for quite a few years now. Um, just to reassure you, as I'm sure you all know, and, uh, and anybody else who's listening, um, the Rotary is entirely voluntary, so this money will be spent exclusively on the baskets themselves. Uh, the baskets, um, to my mind, look great in the summer uh, and help um, the high street be a, a thriving high street, which uh, I think we can all agree that it is. So I'm happy to take any questions, but don't want to prolong the proceedings unnecessarily. Thank you. Any members got any questions, or do you want to go straight to the vote? Uh, Councillor like Giles. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to propose an amendment to this evening's uh, proceedings on the basis that we've given a thousand pounds to ourselves we unfortunately don't have enough funding available to give the full £3,000 to the expansion of tree lights for the New Malden Town Centre Partnership, as alluded to in the late material, although an updated budget breakdown has not been given. And so given that in our remaining budget for the year, there's a total sum of £5,250, and in light of the fact that both the Rotary and the Town Centre Partnership applied for grants of £3,000, and they're both very noble causes, I would like to suggest that we split that money evenly. And so my amendment to this particular recommendation is that we reduce the amount allocated to £2,625, whilst also amending recommendation 5 to allocate £2,625 of neighbourhood community grant funding to the Town Centre Partnership. That seems to me the fairest way to proceed. Both of these schemes enhance our high street greatly. They're both voluntary, and uh, given that certain members voted to give £1,000 to ourselves, I think this is the fairest way forward, and I'd welcome a seconder for that. I'd second that. Sorry, just to be clear, you want to just add the two amounts and split it evenly. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no. no. We, we, well, well, in effect, yes, Madam Chair, but that's not, what the, that's not what the proposal is. The amendment is to amend recommendation four, replacing the sum of £3,000 with £2,625, and to amend recommendation five to replace £2,250 with £2,625. This would have the effect... So even... Yes, this would have that's the effect of splitting our remaining funding evenly, given that both groups applied for £3,000, i.e. a total of £6,000, but we do not have £6,000 to give. Yes, no, I realise that. Yeah. Um, can I have a show of hands for those who are in favour of the amendment to split the money evenly? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Oh, right. um, so. um, we'll vote now on the amended amount of 2,625 for application four, which, what? No, hang on a minute. The, next is still, this, this, no, it's the difference. Four. Yeah, we're still yeah, so for application four, um, the amount will be 2,625 now for the hanging baskets for Rotary. Can I have a show of hands, those in favour? Thank you. And we have to vote on the other one now. Um, we'll and then we have to vote on... The the uh, oh, OK. Oh, my goodness, this is complicated. Move the toilet quickly. Um, thank you, James. I, I was going to um, uh, sort of sound, send a round robin to you all to uh, fund, fund, fund the shortfall. I've also got some money that I can give you. Yeah, well, that's... Not with me, but you no, know no. what I mean. Um, in my little pot. Yeah. 
no, no. I, 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 uh, that was very much on my mind. Thank you, James. Next financial year. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think there are a few people who've got some for this financial year. <clears throat> Right, okay, everybody's back now. So um, the last application is for the New, Ma New Malden Town Centre Partnership um, for the expansion of tree lights along New Malden High Street. Um, I propose a motion that the sum now will be 2,625, is that correct? Following the last vote we had, uh, for the um, partnership for the expansion of tree lights. Do I have a seconder, please, Councillor Henderson? Yep, I second that, Chair. Thank you. It's me again. Um, yes, I, for those, um, I, I'm sure you, you all are familiar um, around the, this little horseshoe here uh, with the work of the New Malden Town Centre Partnership. Some people uh, listening online or in the audience won't be. It's much less familiar than, than the Rotary Club is, of course. Uh, it was established a year or so ago. Um, it, it, its principal purpose is to work uh, with the, the Royal Borough of Kingston Thames and with voluntary groups uh, within New Malden uh, to enhance the high street, uh, one of it, uh, and uh, the area surrounding it. Um, one of its major roles has been uh, uh, helping with the establishment of Jubilee Square and the events on Jubilee Square. Uh, but also we are very much hoping to help with the high street, which is where these uh, tree lights ca come in. Um, we've um, had put banners on the high street, the existing tree lights uh, uh, organised by the partnership, funded through a, uh, a grant which was obtained through the GLA, and there is plenty more to come. But uh, the tree lights are very popular, they look lovely, uh, and I'm sure enhance the uh, atmosphere on the high street a, a great deal, uh, especially in the early evening um, when, when it's dark and uh, it tempt people out, or if they're out, tempt them to stay more, dwell more, uh, shop more, uh, go to cafes and restaurants more. So um, I'll be knocking on all your doors, both with my rotary hat on and my partnership hat on to make up this little shortfall that has arisen. Uh, but that's uh, any, any questions, I'm happy to an answer them, uh, uh, but I, I know that you've got quite a contentious planning application uh, next. Councillor Massimi, if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment. I, I just want to ask a question regarding the technical aspect of the, the grant and the work to be carried out. Am I correct to understand that this is, once we have this grant, um, to pay for the, the light, those will be remain in working conditions and safe for five years. Is that the way I read it? Uh, that's correct. I mean, they may last much longer, um, but the um, the vendors they don't guarantee them for five years, but they say that they should last five years. Just to give you an exa example of how long these installations can last, you'll be aware of the um, existing lights in the centre, the Christmas lights. They, they were put up by Rotary uh, quite a long time ago, and the idea was, and the technical guidance was, that um, they should be taken down every year and serviced. Um, but that's not been possible because the cost of doing that is prohibitive. I, I won't go into the reasons why, but it is. Um, yet, every year we keep our fingers crossed and they come on. And, and so these lights do have probably a greater uh, a, a longevity than five, but that, that's what we're told how long they should last. And they don't come down. They're not designed to come down. Thank you. Anything else? No? Um, can we go, vote, go to a vote, or is that unanimous? Yeah. Unanimous, thank you. And, and thank you. Um, I believe it's your birthday to be, today. It is indeed. Yes. I forgot. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, 21 I knew you'd again. Before, <laughs> I knew you'd be for me, but happy birthday to you, um, Simon, from, from all of us. Yeah, well, th thank you very well, much. Thank, sorry thank you. Had to come on uh, your it's a pleasure to have come back and seen you all again. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. And you. 
Oh, sorry. Um, neighbourhood Manager's Report. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a few information items uh, this evening. Um, so the first item is about the draft local plan. The consultation on the first draft of the local plan has launched and it's open until the end of February. The local plan is the vision of the borough and will be used to guide and assess development for the next 20 years. And you can get involved by visiting www.kingston.gov.uk forward slash local plan. Um, the second item is a funding opportunity. Um, you can raise funds with Kingston Community Lottery. So if you're a community group, a youth club, school or team that can raise funds for a project, um, get involved with the Community Lottery and you don't have to be a registered charity to join. The Community Lottery is solely raising funds for a good cause within Kingston and the organisers, Gatherwill, provided with all the tools to join and promote your campaign and it's free. Um, to find out how to do this, you can visit their website or email them at support at kingstonlottery.co.uk. And finally, I'd like to um, mention that Warm Hubs. So Kingston Council are pulling together with communities around the borough and are hosting 18 warm spaces, offering a variety of support from computer use and advice um, to free food and drink games and people to chat to. Um, you can find all the locations on the uh, Kingston website at kingston.gov.uk forward slash warm spaces. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Megan. Um, urgent items authorised by the Chair. I don't have any. Um, there are no urgent items, so I close this meeting of the main committee at 2109. Um, and move over to the new and all Malden planning, uh, Malden planning subcommittee. Members scheduled to attend t tonight's planning subcommittee are now asked to remain in their seats while the rest of the committee now leave the meeting. Thank you for your attendance this evening and everybody else listening online. Um, we'll have a few minutes to allow people to leave and if you want to have a comfort break, now is the time before we go to the next one. Thank you very much.